Hello guys. It is a beautiful but mosquito plagued January night here. Uh, we are back in the Point Lonesome Swamp. I am thrilled to say the little dog and I have been uh, been enjoying it while we still can. We have been out in the wilds of the oasis of freedom for the past week. And neither one of us got eaten by an alligator. I think you'll be glad to hear. But it is now Sunday, January 9th, and I'm wearing a jacket because of the clouds of mosquitoes that are getting through my screened-in kitchen. But anyway, since it is Sunday, just in time to do my doomsday sermon. This isn't exactly going to be a doomsday sermon uh, by this fellow named Jeffrey St. Clair. But before I get into uh, this week's pseudo-sermon, uh, I just need to address, I have gotten a few emails, I guess there's been a little bit of confusion, and I really want to uh, thank kind-hearted listener Bill Wonder for his very kind donation to this channel. Uh, he called it a vote for interviews, and, and I made a comment uh, about a week ago when I was reading this uh, excellent essay by a fellow named Elliot Jacobson, and on there, I, my, my quote was pretty much, I did not say I was going to interview Elliot Jacobson. I said, in the event that I do crank up my interviews again on Collapse Chronicles. I wanted, you know, to bring on Elliot Jacobson to interview him. So I was looking forward to getting around probably at some point to interviewing uh, Elliot Jacobson here at Collapse Chronicles, coming out of retirement to interview Elliot. Uh, but I want to send out a huge thank you to uh, my dear friend, Doomer Chick Sandy Shellis over there at Environmental Coffee House. She kindly offered to do the heavy lifting, so she interviewed uh, Elliot Jacobson instead. And I must say, I listened to this interview, every word of it, uh, last night. It was the number one best interview that Sandy has ever had on Environmental Coffee House. And so there is no need for me to interview Elliot Jacobson. So I highly suggest you go over there and listen to that excellent interview at Environmental Coffee House. And you can probably find an interview with Elliot over at Michael Dowd's excellent uh, YouTube channel. And if Michael has not interviewed Elliot Jacobson, my guess is in the next couple of weeks. He probably will. So I'm sure Michael will do a fantastic job of whatever Sandy missed. So I'm just kind of feeling a bit of like a third wheel here in the Doomosphere. I have Sandy Shellis and Michael Dowd doing my work for me, so I don't have to do it. So I do want to, uh, and I just wanted to say, Thank you to my dear friends Sandy Shellis and Michael Dowd. Keep up the good work, guys. So anyway, I'm going to go back to the tried and true uh, Sunday sermon. And if I ever start interviewing people on Collapse Chronicles again, maybe I will bring... Jeffrey St. Clair on board, unless Sandy or Michael wants to go interview Jeffrey St. Clair, and uh, then I won't have to. Uh, Jeffrey St. Clair is the editor of Counterpunch. He's one of the big editors of uh, Counterpunch, which is generally one of these lefty rags, but uh, I, I'm glad to find out that Jeffrey St. Clair is no fan of Joe Biden. He uh, has a lot of fun in here uh, tearing apart uh, Joe Biden's fake climate and environmental agenda. But what, oh, and I want to thank uh, alert uh, listener John Elliott 
uh, John sending me this. <clears throat> I thought I was done with uh, 2021 roundups. Okay, but <laughs> but but Jeffrey St. Clair. Uh, I, I, I'm assuming this is somewhat ironic, but what, what he did apparently is Jeffrey just went through his notes about, and, and this is pretty much just climate change. Not solely, but the vast majority and doing a, a roundup of 2021 climate catastrophe stories. He did not pick the number one, the top 10, the top 50, the 100, uh, Jeffrey has given us 412, 412 uh, climate catastrophe stories. Uh, this is, you know, it's just, what, what he's doing is just hitting you over the head with, uh, I don't know if I can, uh, if you guys can see this, all sorts of charts, graphs, uh, doomsday pictures. And so what I'm going to do is uh, I, I'm just going to pick out a few of these, I guess in no particular order. So I, I think what, what Jeffrey did is he simply, you know, went through his notes from January 1st to December 31st. And... Uh, and we're just going to, I, I'm just going to stab. All right, we're going to, out of 412, we're just going to pick 12 and leave out the other 400. I will put the link on here. Anybody uh, who missed the other 400 stories. Okay. Uh, oh, and he's, no fan, and he's also no fan of Barack Obama. Uh, okay. Number one, in no particular order, over the past century, three of Hawaii's major islands, Oahu, Maui, and Kauai, have lost around one quarter of their beach shores. The Obamas have been complicit in their destruction, and every, every one of these, uh, he links you to the article. So if, I, I totally missed the story that one quarter of the beaches in, uh, in Hawaii's three I, have disappeared under the ocean already, and the Obamas uh, have certainly, uh, Hurricane uh, Farrakh and Michelle. Okay. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> January 8th, a new study finds that the amount of baked-in warming from carbon pollution is enough to push temperatures past 2 degrees Celsius, and, and there's probably studies that say 3 degrees, in which John Kerry cites the murderous Plan Columbia. And then a link to this, uh, completely under my ra radar, the murderous Plan Columbia as the template for the kind of climate plan he is concocting for Biden. Uh, quote, so we put together a plan not unlike the plan we once put together called Plan Columbia where we put a billion dollars on the table and managed to pull Colombia back from being a failed state. Uh, and then he links you over to that. That, that could be a whole nother rant. Good Lord. Uh, let's see. Okay, just, just diving, as I say, completely at random. Uh, okay. For the third year in a row, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife's fall survey of the Sacramento River Delta turned up no delta smelt, once the most abundant fish in the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta, now likely to become extinct in the wild this year, or well, now 2022, so you can probably kiss goodbye. Um, 
Oh, what I'm going to do, guys, we're just going, I'm just going to read the first one of each day. January 22nd, Joe Biden is getting praise from the professional environmental lobby for rejoining the Paris Accords, which are, in effect, a group of post-industrial nations who have agreed to blame developing nations for their own failures to meet climate goals. <clears throat> January 29th, uh, leading with science, except when it contradicts the desires of some of my leading financial backers, when Biden says he isn't, quote, banning fracking, that's no malarkey. The rest of his climate agenda, however, might well prove to be, and then uh, probably later on we find out about how much Joe Biden really did or did not ban fracking. Okay, let's jump ahead to February. Um, I'm going to go over to Utah. Satellite data shows that the snowpack in the Uinta and Wasatch Mountains of Utah is melting both is melting earlier and earlier, dramatically changing when and how much Great Salt Lake is refilled. You can kiss goodbye the Great Salt Lake. Alright, let's go over there to uh, March 5th, uh, okay, uh, let's see, I shall be released, which is, that's the name, he's nodding to Bob Dylan, scientists have found that permafrost buried beneath the Arctic Ocean holds 60 billion tons of methane and 560 billion tons of organic carbon, making it one of the largest sources of greenhouse gases not currently included in climate projections. That the Arctic Ocean, those 60 billion tons of methane and 560 billion tons of organic carbon nowhere in the IPCC climate projections, and the consequences are becoming clear. Methane levels hit a record high in November 2020 at 1891 parts per billion. A year earlier, they stood at 1875. Um, okay, he quotes our old friend David Wallace Wells. I guess was uh, ranting on March 12th. This was David Wallace Wells on climatological end times. Take it away, David. Most people talk as if Miami and Bangladesh still have a chance of surviving. Most of the scientists I spoke with assume we will lose them within this century even if we stop burning fossil fuels in the next decade. Two degrees of warming used to be considered the threshold of catastrophe. Tens of millions of climate refugees unleashed upon an unprepared world. Now, two degrees is our goal, per the Paris Climate Accords, and experts give us only slim odds of hitting that. Thank you, David. And before he went in, of course, to his hopium, I'm sure. Uh, okay, then on March 19th, he shares a video of some Amazon Indians being massacred. Yes. Then we, next to that, we have Christopher Hines the stepson of Biden climate czar John Kerry has been paid more than $1 million since 2007 to lobby for the American Petroleum Institute. 
Do you think so? Um, he really has a lot of fun with uh, with with John Kerry. I see. Um, what's going on with environmental chemicals? An in-depth study of blood samples from children in Pennsylvania by Environmental Health News shows that the bodies of children living near fracking sites are contaminated with fracking-related chemicals. Hmm. At levels up to 91 times as high as the average American and substantially higher than levels seen in the average adult cigarette smoker. Do you think so? Okay, and then, all right, he quotes Kamala Harris. We're now in the April 9th. Kamala Harris, this is what was on her mind in April, in case you missed it. Quote, for years and generations, wars have been fought over oil. In a short matter of time, they will be fought over water, close quote. Jeffrey's comment to that is, glad to see Harris admit that the U.S. has been fighting wars for oil, though the, she seems a little too excited about the prospect of fighting new ones for water. Yes. Kamala Harris, is that how you pronounce that woman's name? Okay. Uh, do you remember this one? I think I remember this one from April 16th. <clears throat> this is, no, this is actually um, uh, what they are, this was the news from, uh, on April 16th from November of 2020. Um, a hurricane a week before the 2020 elections nearly toppled a deep water drilling operation in the Gulf of Mexico, narrowly averting a catastrophe similar to the Deepwater Horizon disaster. Yet the incident was covered up by the oil company and federal regulators for nearly five months and only came to light after a group of oil rig workers filed a lawsuit. Um, hadn't heard that one. Okay, let's listen to the State of the Air report uh, from April 23rd from the American Lung Association. Four in ten Americans now live in counties where the air is so toxic it could do permanent damage to your lungs. Among the worst, well, obviously Los Angeles and Fairbanks, Alaska, showing up. Uh, okay, good Lord, guys, I'm on April. This could uh, this could go on. We're gonna go over to Sub-Saharan Africa as ranchers' logging operations, mines. And don't forget, ecotourist resorts gobbled up their former ha habitat and ivory poachers halt their migration routes. The range of African elephants has shrunk to just 17% of what it could be. So the range of African elephants down 83%. That actually sounds a little bit optimistic. Uh, to me, uh, all right, we have Nestle's sucking water out of the planet. Well, I could have that rant from right here uh, up the road in Florida. Um, good Lord. All right, a new, this is May, we're now in May. A new study from Rodion concludes that for the first time, for the first time, China's greenhouse gas emissions 
have exceeded the combined total from other developed nations. In sum, we are fucked. Okay, that is Jeffrey St. Clair summing up the situation in May. Sorry for the F-bomb. Uh, that was just what I was on uh, Jeffrey St. Clair's mind in the first week of May. Uh, I'm not going to share that good news story. Uh, don't want to get in trouble here. Okay, May 21st. He's looking, checking in with Chainsaw Joe Biden. Chainsaw Joe Biden's forest plan calls for increasing treatments, otherwise known as logging, by two to four times using climate change as the bogus rationale if it comes down to a choice between Donald Trump's raking and Biden's logging, I'm getting my rake out. There you go. Thank you, uh, Joe. Chainsaw Joe Biden out trumping Donald Trump. Uh, okay. Jeffrey St. Clair is a fan of the F-bomb, so uh, since it's his sermon, not mine, now we're up to May 28th. We're just going to do the first half of the year. We're going to get up to July 1st, and you can go on here and read the all 412. This is May 28th. Another F-bomb warning. Warning. A report by the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists reports how the system of carbon offsets used by the airline industry to make claims that their carbon emissions are net zero is seriously flawed. Seriously flawed is the Bulletin of Atomic Scientist delicate way of saying total fucking scam. All right, let's go up to June the 4th. All right. Uh, <laughs> can we... Can we have a little bit of a corona panic jab? Uh, okay. Nearly 40% of heat-related deaths have been tied to climate change. But if the corona panic has taught us anything, it's that the only death that matters to many Americans is their own. <laughs> Thank you, Jeffrey St. Clair, for uh, summing up death anxiety. Uh, I refer you to my interviews with Sheldon Solomon. Uh, if you want more of explanation on that one, on death anxiety to the average panic sheeple. But we're going to move on. What's going on? Oh, we have more corona panic. And I was at, as, as, as June 11th. Wow. Despite the economic slowdown related to the corona panic, levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide peaked in May, reaching a monthly average of 419 parts per million. Uh, this represents an increase of 2 ppm from a year earlier, the the highest level since measurements began 63 years ago. Can someone please tell me where we are today? I'm guessing about 421 is where we are. Uh, okay, June 18th. USA, USA, USA. Death Valley, California hit 124 degrees on June 18th, making it not only the hottest spot in the United States, but also the hottest spot in the world. 
as temperatures spiked 10 to 30 degrees ab above average across the western U.S. Uh, a long description of salmon deaths. Okay, June 25th. Uh, do, you remember, do you remember this one? Uh, on June 25th, ground temperatures, gr and, and you know, you got ground temperatures, the, the, you know, the heat of the dirt is what he's talking about, topped 118 degrees Fahrenheit in the Arctic Circle this week. But here in the U.S., the dinner table conversation has gone like this. Quote, Honey, did you know the high school wants to teach our kids that George Washington kept slaves? Close quote. I need to be careful, and uh, we're going to finish up uh, on July 2nd. Uh, July 2nd, the Pacific Northwest from Red Bluff, California to Bellingham, Washington, and large parts of Canada we know and care nothing about just got ransacked by an insurrectionary heat dome. Nancy Pelosi naming a select committee to investigate the causes will be the surest sign Congress intends to do nothing about it. Of course, Pelosi not appointing a select committee to investigate the causes of the insurrectionary heat dome will also be a sign that Congress intends to do nothing about it. I set up a Nerf basketball hoop for the grandkids last week. By Sunday afternoon, it had melted like one of Dolly's clocks. I guess it's soccer fields for them. And then Jeffrey posted a picture of his grandchildren, <laughs> his grandchildren's uh, basketball hoop in July, and that gets us halfway through the year. So we have another 206 of these, all sorts of charts and graphs. Uh, anyway, Jeffrey St. Clair is a good guy. Don't know whether I will ever have a chance to talk to Jeffrey St. Clair. However, Sandy Shellis or Michael Dowd, if you are listening to this and you would like to interview Jeffrey St. Clair, you can reach him on Twitter at Jeffrey St. Clair 3. So uh, maybe we can look forward to an interview with Jeffrey St. Clair, but probably won't be here on Collapse Chronicles. But you just never can tell. Just never can tell what I will pull out of my Doomer hat on a whim. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this up and uh, go uh, fumigate uh, the Point Lonesome Swamp for uh, West Nile virus, or is it dengue fever that we're getting? What's that? Mosquito truck. Can you hear it? Over on the other side. Oh, the mosquito truck is is literally out. He's he's heading our way. I uh, I put a gate across so the mosquito truck is not allowed back here. Maybe we should go open the gate. What do you think? And let that let that damn mosquito truck in. One little whip around. <laughs> and let it gate. whip around, man. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Can't Get see. out there and enjoy the mosquito trucks while you still can. Bye, guys.